Welcome to our paper presentation for the paper titled Robust Generalization and Safe Query Specialization in Counterfactual Learning to Rank, published at the Web Conference 2021. My name is Harry Oosterhuis. This is uh, co-authored by Professor Maarten de Rijken. And I want to start with posing you a dilemma. Let's say that we're doing uh, a ranking task, recommendation, or search where in a certain context or query, we have a feature-based model, maybe a neural network trained on 10 million interactions, which tells us the ranking we should show is A, B, C, D. However, when we look into the data set, we see that this ranking has been shown many times, and every time uh, none of these items has received clicks, except for one time where item D received one click. Should we, therefore, place item D on top of the ranking the next time we show it to a user? Or should we trust the feature-based model? Think about what you would prefer. My guess is that you trust the feature-based model more than the one-click signal. Why? Because a single click is very unreliable. Uh, clicks are very noisy, so if we're going to change our behavior based on a single click, there's a very high likelihood that we were making a wrong decision, that we're following noise instead of a real preference signal. So I'm going to ask you the question again, but this time there's been 10 clicks on item D instead of one. Should we now change the ranking? What about at 100 clicks or 1,000 or 10,000 clicks? Personally, I would trust 10,000 clicks to put item D on top of the ranking. My guess is that you agree with me, but the real dilemma here is where, what moment do we have enough clicks that we trust the click signal more than the feature-based model? Some, there's somewhere in this example, we've switched from trusting the feature-based model to the click-based model. The core of this paper is about deciding what is the moment when you make that decision. All right, so let's get into it. I'll start with an introduction to counterfactual learning to rank. I don't want to spend too much time on it. There are other, uh, this previous work, there are other videos that explain this much in detail. Um, but to give you some introduction, the idea of counterfactual learning to rank is that you have methods that learn from clicks while cor correcting for interaction biases caused during the gathering of data. Uh, we correct for position bias and we use the policy aware approach. And that basically gives us an IPS estimator. It's an inverse propensity scoring estimator where we look at the click to rate, but we divide the click to rate of each document by some propensity, which is the probability of examination, which corrects for this position bias. Again, I don't want to go into too much detail, except that this gives us an unbiased estimate of the relevance, meaning if we have enough clicks, it's going to converge on the true relevance. All right, um, what we can do with that estimate is we can plug it into a ranking loss, for instance, a DCG loss, and we can optimize a linear model. That's what I've done here. This is on the Yahoo Web Scope Learning to Rank dataset with simulated biases and some noisy clicks. And what you see is that the average number of interactions per query increases, the performance goes up. And in this example, we need about 20% of the uh, queries need one click, and we've already improved the performance of the over the logging policy, which is this straight line here in terms of NDCG. Um, the reason this works, of course, is because when you have a feature-based model, you can learn how to rank on a different query based on clicks from another query. So you can learn based on the features what sort of the behavior is that's good, and you can apply it everywhere. That's why we don't need to click on every data point, on every query, I should say. All right, um, that's one choice. Uh, another choice of model is a tabular model. And we don't see this often in the counterfactual learning to rank literature. You see it more in uh, bandit based online learning to rank. Uh, it's a very simple model. It's, it's just storing these estimated values and ranking accordingly. So instead of training something that goes from features to ranking, we just look up what was our estimate for this document in terms of relevance. And you see the learning curves looks very different. What instantly pops into your eye is probably that it converges at 100% NCG. This is NCG based on the entire ranking. It's not top K NCG. So this means it has solved the ranking problem 
And this is not a surprise, of course, because it's an unbiased estimate. However, before we get there, there's, there's a, quite a slope, and we see that initially performance is really, really poor. This is because the tabular model can't take lessons from one query and apply them to a different query. If um, it, it can't take, it doesn't have anything like features or a function that it's optimizing. So if you've never shown a document, you have no information about, about the document, you don't know what to do with it. Uh, and that causes this very long learning curve. And you see here that every uh, document needs 20 clicks before it improves over the logging model. That's a lot. So queries follow a long tail distribution. So very often 20 clicks is not something you get. Um, all right. We have this is a trade off. On the one hand, we have feature based model with very generalized performance, very robust over all queries. We can apply them to queries we've never seen before, but the performance is often limited by what is the features are available. On the other hand, we have a tabular model, very specialized performance, in the, specialized in the terms that it's independent for each query, its behavior. As a result, it can't be applied to anything, any query we've not seen before, but the performance is not limited by features. We can learn any possible ranking behavior with this model. And if you combine those learning curves, you see the trade-off, right? So initially, uh, the feature-based model is is preferred, and at some point the tabular model is preferred. And because not all queries get a lot of interactions, um, you may never reach the point where the tabular model is the best choice. Uh, so somehow we want to get the best of these two worlds. What we want is some sort of maximization function over these, this curve. Um, that's not easy because the moment when this choice is made varies on a lot of things. For instance, if we increase the amount of noise, we can see that it lies at 1,000 clicks per query instead of 100 clicks. So it's not something we can simply remember. All right, um, the goal thus for us is, on the one hand, we want to have this safe, robust behavior of feature-based models, but we also want to have this high performance at convergence of the tabular models. And we definitely want to avoid this initial period of detrimental performance that this, these tabular models have. So the first step, is we need a way to safely choose between models. And we do that with high confidence performance bounds. We follow previous work by Jageman et al. from 2020, where they introduced the safe exploration algorithm. Well, we realized that you can apply this algorithm for any choice of models. Uh, what it does is you, first you have the estimated performance, and then we calculate bounds around these models, uh, around these, these performance curves. Uh, these bounds, for instance, can indicate with 90% certainty, this is a parameter you can set, that the real performance is in this area. So this is the our estimated performance. We know the real performance is with 90% certainty in this area. Now, to make a safe choice between these models, we only have to look at the moment where these bounds no longer overlap, which is right over here. And now we can compute with 90% uh, confidence. You can do the exact computation, of course, but uh, let's say it's just 90% confidence that the blue model is better than the green model. Uh, and this is very safe. So there's a very, this is, we, have, we can make a safe decision in this way. However, we realize that this approach, while applicable, um, is very inefficient because it uses two bounds to make a single decision. So we introduce a new approach where we don't bound the performance of each model, but only the relative performance or the performance difference, I could say. So we look at the difference between uh, these two curves, the difference in performance. For instance, here uh, we have a negative difference because the blue line is worse than the green line. Um, and then we take a bound on that difference or the estimated difference, I should say. So the real difference in performance is somewhere in this area with 90% confidence. And as we get more data, uh, of course, this, this difference is, is going up and we can safely choose the moment where the lower bound is uh, greater than zero as the moment where we are 90% sure that blue is an improvement over green, which is right here. What we prove in this paper is that our approach is always more or at least as efficient as this existing approach. And our experiments show that it's much, much more efficient because we only use one bound to make one decision. 
All right. Um, then we have uh, the generalization and specialization framework. This is the main contribution of our work. This is the framework that we're going to use to combine that uh, those two models and those two types of uh, performance. First, we train. We have the optimization phase where we train a feature-based model on the data over all queries, so all of the data we have, and we compute the values of the tabular model. So we train both this feature-based model and the tabular model, where, uh, and then when we have the serving procedure, so when we actually get a query and have to do ranking, we choose between the logging policy, the feature-based model, and the tabular model. First, we choose between the logging policy and the feature-based model according to performance across all queries. So we look at all of the data and we estimate on the entire data set, is the feature-based model better than the logging policy? If so, we choose the feature-based model. Then we look per query whether the tabular model has a better performance on that query than the feature-based model uh, or the logging policy if the previous choice was made differently. So the idea is that for a single query, you can follow the tabular model if with high confidence the tabular model is better than the feature-based model for that query. Otherwise, we'll take the safe choice, which is the, usually the feature-based model or the, the logging policy. Uh, here's the visualization to make it a little bit more clear. On top, we see the logging policy and the users. Their interactions, of course, create the click data that we have. And we're going to divide this click data per query. So we have five queries in this example. And we've divided the click data for these five queries. We train the feature-based model on all of the data. So the feature-based model is trained on the complete data set for performance that generalizes well. Whereas we train the tabular model, it's not really trading, it's more computing. And we can see this as having a separate model for each query, because these, the behavior of these models are completely independent. So um, you can see this as having trained five specialized models, each specialized for a single query. And then we use the bounds to make decisions between these three choices. First, according, we look at all of the data and we look at the generalized performance to choose between feature-based model or the logging policy. Then per query, we look at the winner of the previous choice, let's say the feature-based model in this example, and the specific specialized model. So for query one, we compute the bounds on the difference in performance between the feature-based model and the specialized model for that query. And we see that in this scenario, we have a lot of data. So it's very likely that the specialized model knows what to do here and is actually the better choice than the feature-based model. So we apply and deploy that. But for query two, we have very little data. So now it's much better to trust on this feature-based model because it's a safe, robust choice. Whereas the tabular model probably still has this detrimental performance. And we continue like that for every query. So we have these two choices for each query. We have three choices actually. And we use the bounds to make conservative choices between them. All right, uh, let's take a look at the results. The same graph you've seen before. And now I've added our framework with different uh, bounds. So the red line here is no bounds. This is a 1% confidence level, 50%, uh, 75% and 95% confidence level. And we see that uh, it combines, uh, these, all these lines combine the initial safe performance and the high convergence, uh, high performance at convergence. When they choose between these models depends on their level of confidence. In this scenario, it looks like using no bounds might as well be the best choice. However, if we increase the level of noise, we see that with, if you're not using bounds, make, can have you make mistakes. Whereas having only a single percent level of confidence can already avoid all of your mistakes. All right, um, to conclude this talk, we've seen that you can choose different models with different advantages and different risks. Feature-based models for robust generalized performance and tabular models for specialized high performance at convergence, but initial period of very detrimental performance. We've introduced a generalization and specialization framework to combine these two sides we optimize a model for generalization and another for specialization, and we use performance bounds, high confidence bounds to safely choose between these per query. Our results show that we can have both robust generalization and safe query specialization in counterfactual learning to rank. Um, our code is available. Uh, here are my references. I want to thank our sponsors. 
and I want to thank you for watching.